In the previous lesson, we saw how the checkout page looks like when the users are not logged in. But what if they are logged in? Well, some things are different. So let's see what kind of changes we have to make. We'll begin by duplicating this artboard and we'll call it checkout logged in. So when you're logged in, you can immediately proceed to your order. In that case, the place order button is available. So you can click it. Uh, let's say that maybe you added a discount. So here you can actually put something like this. And then instead of the login form, we can proceed to filling in the billing address. And here, we're going to say something like this. Here's the billing address we have on file. If you wish to change it, simply click on each field. And we're going to turn these forms into editable forms. So on one hand, they'll present the information. But if you click on a field, you'll be able to enter edit mode and edit the value of that field. So one uh, change that we have to do here is push this in height 30% 30 pixels, sorry. And then these fields will actually change. I uh, will remove the login button, we don't need that anymore. Push these down 30 pixels. And then this one will be for the full name. And here, let's actually fill in with some information. This will just create regular text like that. And we'll push it up just like that. And then we're going to have a field for the company, which is optional. So we're going to mark that in parentheses. And then we can have an address. And then you can put a phone number if you want. That's optional. But you get the idea. So this is the billing address. Now, on a normal e commerce website, you would also have a shipping address. But since we're selling electronic products, we don't need a shipping address, right? The user can just download that item. So the other thing that we need really is a payment method. So for the payment method, uh, let's actually regroup this or rename it as billing. Now let's duplicate it. Let's put it down at about 120 from the previous section. And let's say payment method. And in here, we can say something like, we support payments via credit card or PayPal. Resize this. And then bring up the the form. And then delete this form, we don't need it anymore. Because in here we'll implement a tab control, very similar to the one used in the shop theme single. So this one right here. And actually, I'm going to shop index, I'm going to grab the category filter. And I'm going to bring it in here. And I'm going to position it at 90 pixels from the content above, make sure we align it properly with the grid. Here, we're going to say payment tabs, and I'm going to say use credit card or PayPal. Delete that. Make this the active item, Be bring everything back and resize this to 555. All right, now, let's um, zoom out of this a little bit because we do need a bit more space. Because if we're going to use a credit card, we need a form for it. So we need a form built exactly like this one, but one that requires a card number, the name on the card, expiration date, month, year, and then the CVV code or that security code. So I'm just going to fast forward here because it can be really tedious to uh, to build this form. And I'm going to come back once I've completed that. Okay, so this is the card or the credit card form, as I told you, card number, name, expiration date and CVV. Now, the interactions with this form and how it behaves when you actually type something into it will be dealt with in another lesson. But for now, let's see about the other 
tab here. So what happens when we decide to use PayPal? Well, for that, simply uh, duplicate this bit, and we're going to rename it to logged in PayPal. And of course, we don't have the card form anymore. And here, we'll say tab inactive, make this one active, do the, uh, the usual procedure here. And then if we decide to use PayPal, well, there are no additional steps. So we can type a text uh, that's in our regular text, TISA Pro regular 555 in width. Let's see what kind of distance we used here. We used 60 pixels. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. And we can say something like, if you choose to use PayPal, there are no additional steps. Simply click the place order button to continue. All right, now let's do some tidying up here. Let's uh, bring this up. And let's bring the footer back up, just like that. And we'll do the same here. All right. So that uh, completes this stage of the checkout. Now, what if we do actually make an order, and the uh, order is successful? Well, we need to display a message back to the user giving some feedback. So for that, let's just uh, first resize our canvases here. All right. And let's, uh, yeah, let's duplicate this artboard, for example, and we'll call it checkout order confirmation. And in here, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep the menu. Uh, but we don't need the breadcrumbs. This we're just gonna push down a little bit, we're gonna say, thanks. Uh, we don't need this bit. And we don't need this bit. And we don't need basically any of this. And from the footer, well, we just need the actual form. So we're going to delete all the unnecessary things. We can keep the the form and the copyright there. All right, and let's add some text. Yeah, some just normal text here, aligned in the center, position at 60 from the title there. That says something like, we've received your order, you'll get a confirmation email shortly. You're awesome. And then we'll uh, bring in the footer. Yeah, that's basically it for our order confirmation page, we'll just display a simple uh, message, along with the uh, sign up form. And with that, we've actually completed the checkout pages. Now, in terms of pages related to the shop, uh, there is one left, and that is my account. So we'll uh, cover that in the next lesson.